running out of fuel. Hey, City. Hi. Hi. Yo, long time no see. Hi, Alex. Where you come from? Yeah, I'm from. I'm want to go to my discussion with my colleagues. Yeah. Oh, what's so, he? Um, what's wrong? I'm running out of fuel. My motor oh. has no fuel. What should I do? Where are you going? You are going to the discussion? Ah uh, yeah. About what? Ah, uh, we will discuss about our new project, which is um using biocatalyst in biodiesel production. Biodiesel. Uh, ah yeah. uh, interesting. I haven't heard not so much information about biodiesel. Oh. Okay. Ah, uh, so you are you interested to join of us? Of course, I'm interested. Can I join you? Why not? Well, come on, let's go. Let's go. Alright. Okay. So there are different ways to produce it and then there are different kinds of raw materials such as crude, crops, frying oils. Mm -hmm. So they also have different types of catalysts. Basically it's sodium, sodium hydroxide, acid such as sulfuric acid, uh, iron exchange resin, lipase and supercritical fluid. One of the advantage of this fuel, it is the raw materials is to produce it is uh, natural and renewable. Okay, so uh, what is the raw material that you use for this process? Uh, now let me explain about the feedstock that can be used for biodiesel production. So basically, for biodiesel production, there are a lot of research that have been done in order to find the suitable type of feedstock to be used as the raw material for biodiesel production. So basically, until now there are four generations of stock that can be used as biodiesel production. Uh, the first is the food crops, second is the lignocellulosic biomass, the third one is algae and the fourth one is uh, the genetically engineered of these uh, crops that can enhance the production of biodiesel. Okay, so among of these raw materials, which one is the raw materials that you have chose for the process? Mm, that's right. Okay, so for our uh, biodiesel production, we have chose to use the lignocellulosic biomass uh, as the feedstock for production of our biodiesel. Because uh, in our country, Malaysia, there are abundantly available uh, source of lignocellulosic biomass, uh, such as from the oil palm, from paddy field, from sugar cane, wood industries, and also rubber plantation. Okay, we have mentioned that there is first and second generation of the raw material. So what is that? What is the first generation and what is the second generation? Oh, okay, I, I understand your question. Okay, basically, for the first generation and the second generation of uh, the feedstock for biodiesel production, it's the same thing, actually, the source. The source is came from the uh, crops, from the food crops. Such as the wheat, sugar cane, uh, rubber, palm oil, and others. However, for the first generation, uh, we use directly. We uh, take directly the wheat, sugar cane, the palm oil to be converted as the raw material for our biodiesel production. So, problem rises uh, on this particular method because uh, there are competition uh, between using this. 
feed stock for food supply and also for feed stock for our biodiesel production. That is why the second generation of uh, feed stock for biodiesel production is developed. That is the by using the waste from these food crops, we converted it into uh, our feed stock for biodiesel production, such as from the palm oil. We have used the empty fruit bunch, the crown, such as from the paddy, we choose uh, to use the rice husks and the rice straw to be used as the sources of stock for our biodiesel production. Hmm, okay, that is interesting. So, um, how do you produce this biodiesel from the waste? two ways of production which is using direct use and blending and micro emulsion so uh, we don't use the direct use and blending because direct use and blending will use the food production uh, so we use the micro emulsion and the micro emulsion we have two types which is the thermal cracking also known as pyrolysis and trans esterification also known as alcohol lysis so, um, among these two methods, so which one do you choose? Okay, um, we choose the trans esterification because of pyrolysis is difficult to characterize and it is the variety of the reaction path and the variety of reaction products that can may be obtained from the reaction that can be occurred. So, we choose the trans esterification by using the alcohol to separate uh, the fat of the palm oil. In the trans esterification of different types of oils, triglyceride react with an alcohol, generally methanol or ethanol, to produce ester and glycerin. To make it possible, a catalyst is added to the reaction. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in the first step, from triglycerol, diglycerol is obtained. And then last step will be the monoglycerol. When react with alcohol, we produce glycerin. This glycerin will be removed from the oil. So that oil will be known as crude biodiesel. And then the crude biodiesel will go to under refinery and then we can get the biodiesel. Okay, so you said that you use catalyst to produce the biodiesel. So what kind of catalyst that you use? So for our biodiesel production, we have chosen to use biocatalyst because it is more environmental friendly and also can be recycled. So I think for that particular aspect, uh, I like it's more functional, more expert. So I think better I like explain it to you. Um, yes, uh, we use uh, lipids as our biocatalyst in producing this biodiesel. Okay, so um, why do you choose lipids? Okay, um, basically uh, the idea of using this lipids for biodiesel production because um, it's characteristic okay, in which uh, it is non stereospecific for the mono, tri, and mono, di, and triglyceride, uh, in which it can be converted to biodiesel. So, it's also capable of catalyzing the esterification of FFA, you know, free fatty acid. Okay, as well, uh, it's easy to produce. Okay, uh, moreover, okay, this light base, it is uh, temperature and alcohol resistant. Uh, uh, so it's reusable, low reaction time, and also low product inhibition, okay. Okay, in which uh, it can lead to the high combustion of biodiesel. Okay, so um, where do you get this light paste? Okay, um, this light paste, it can be from uh, many sources. Okay, what, what we have studied, okay, this uh, light paste can be obtained from, from plant, microorganism and okay. animal. Okay. Okay. For plant, it can be either from papaya latex or seed lipase or okay, from microorganisms such as uh, from bacteria and fungi. Okay, for animal, it can be we can extract for the pancreatic lipase. Oh, okay. So, how do you integrate this lipase into the process? Okay, now so I explain how to integrate the Information the biodiesel is produced by trans esterification of oil or fats with chemical catalyst or like pests in which uh, immobilized like pests. Uh, we find this is most suitable method as the biocatalyst. This is uh, become the high attention 
because the process is greener or sus more sustained. So, um, adoption is the chosen one for this immobilization in which uh, adsorption is the attachment uh, of the light phase on the surface or the carrier by weak force uh, such as renewal force. So, this adsorption can be prepared under manipulation uh, without uh, major entry to those in the associate process in which uh, it is relatively uh, easy and very low cost. Okay, moreover, the area can be easily to be recovered for repeated immobilization. That means we can re uh, recover back the light test and the molecular test so we can produce uh, more. It is uh, uh, two kinds of light paste, uh, which is uh, used frequently compared to other, especially for the large scale industrialization in which what is uh, from Candida Antarctica lipase immobilized on acrylic resin and the other is uh, from uh, Candida Dida species okay, um, lipase immobilized on inexpensive textile membrane Okay, so I'm sure that there is a lot more methods that can be used for the, for the lipase but the why immobilization? Uh, why immobilization? Okay. Okay. I can give you uh, some advantages of using immobilized this immobilized life base. Okay, the first one is the possibility of regeneration and reuse of the immobilized rectal and sorry, immobilized residue because it can be left in the rectal if you keep the rectal flow. Okay, the second one is the use of enzyme in reaction and sorry, rectal which allows use of high concentration of Term and that make for a longer activation of the light phase. Okay. Beside that, okay, a bigger thermal stability in which uh, this thermal stability it is very important to keep our high yield production of the enzyme is due to the native state. Okay. Um, moreover, by using this immobilization of light phase, uh, we can protect it from the solvent that could be used in the reaction and this will prevent all the enzyme particles um, getting together. Okay, um, okay, in general, but I can say uh, most light base can achieve more than 90% by this year. Okay, however, okay, the last scale okay, industrialization uh, there is two kind, uh, which is the uh, Candida Antarctica light base mobilized on acrylic basin, and also uh, from Candida species 99125 light base immobilized on inexpensive textile membrane. Okay, this is mainly due to relatively high stability and also activity and low cost. Okay, so um, why biodiesel has not been commercialized in Malaysia? Okay, before that, there's one thing you must know. In late 2006, what Malaysian government has done uh, about the type of diesel mix, okay, uh, which is the MVO uh, diesel has been proposed uh, in late 2006. Uh, the diesel is um, mainly mixture of 5% of palm oil with 95% of petroleum but the, uh, the involved actually uh, the initial plan was to use the, this involved diesel in government vehicles but however the implementation of this involved diesel uh, encountered several obstacles especially from the diesel engine manufacturers okay so the Japan Automobile uh, Manufacturing Association which is JAMA refused to extend their engine warranty uh, because of one, filter plugging, second, about the fuel system corrosion, and the third one is because of material incompatibility. Alright, so uh, as a result, the government has switched to what is commonly known as B5, which is 5% of palm, palm metal ester mixed with 95% of petroleum diesel. Another challenge is my uh, face by the this biofuel industry because of one, there's negative margin uh, of return on the investment because the government is in slow inflation. So beside that, Malaysian biodiesel industry will not expand fast due to the rising of its stocks and financial stocks for slumping on prices and also the uncertain government support. So, and only large plantation will secure raw materials will survive in this industry. Because of why? Because biodiesel plants cannot live without long-term suppliers and sell contracts. So what we can, what government can do in overcome this problem? So the Malaysian government will need to decide, okay, on the role of the boy 
for biofuel or biodiesel in this country, the economy for the coming decade. So will biofuel primarily be produced for export earnings, uh, capitalizing on demand from EU and US market? So, or will this biofuel be consumed primarily in the domestic transport sector? So if biodiesel is to be consumed primarily in the domestic transport, se uh, transport sector, the government will have to subsidize. To subsidize the, uh, this program as well as the structure for this world subsidize. So, uh, in order for the domestic biodiesel market to be, to be viable. So biofuel will not serve as the significant new source uh, of energy for Malaysia, which makes the added expense of introducing a separate biodiesel subsidy difficult to justify. Instead, the domestic biofuel sector should be encouraged to diversify the choice of its stock, example different animal fats or and waste oil, to reduce the dependency to palm. Okay, now I think I I got the rough idea on the biodiesel. So it is a very information for me since it's very useful and petroleum as we know is already being depleted right now. So I think biodiesel can be the alternative source for the energy to replace the petroleum. I think uh, I have to go now. So I'm very very thankful for you guys because explaining the biodiesel uh, process to me. So uh, I need to go now. So see you later. Okay, Hi, see you, see you, see you again. Bye. Bye.